Hi, welcome to Painting Together with Acrylics. I'm Gigi Chen and I'm in my studio in New York City. So I'm very excited to be painting with you guys today. So if you go down below, there will be the reference images and the list of materials for today's class. So if you're taking it live with me, that's fantastic. If you want to take it together later, also totally okay. So today we are painting an illuminated cat. Today we are going to learn about how to use a very strong light to create a very strong image of this adorable little animal. So let's paint together. So we're gonna go through our materials first. So uh, here is my sample painting, so we can kind of keep this up while I explain the materials. I have here my wet palette. So if you look down below, there is a video link for how you can make a wet palette. And mostly a wet palette is just a very flat uh, sponge. And if you are making it yourself, this one is commercially bought, but if you're making it yourself, you can, make, you can substitute the palette paper for parchment paper, you know, the kind you use for baking, for those of you guys who bake. And you're just gonna wet the sponge and then put the paper over it and then you can keep your, your paint wet. And as long as you're using a container with a cover, you can keep your paint together going really well for a while. So we're using a bunch of different, different brushes, so you guys can use whatever you want. Uh, make sure you have water for cleaning. So every time you're not using a brush, you're gonna put in your water. And we are going to go through the paint real quick. So down below is gonna be a list of all the colors we're using, but I'm using titanium white, cadmium uh, yellow uh, light, uh, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium orange, uh, quinacrazone red, or you can just use a regular red. Uh, I'm using uh, raw sienna, burnt umber, uh, red violet, and some Payne's Gray, Mars Black, and a little bit of Ultramarine. So uh, I'm going to switch out my painting and we're gonna use my, my board. So I like to use wooden, a wooden panel. You guys could also use a canvas or some very good mixed media paper. So whatever works for you. But uh, I like to use wood. And if you guys have a chance, you can have your, your reference picture in front of you and you can download that. I think they put up a link on the side where you can download that. And yeah, so we can start. And so what I wanted to also tell you is that down below is also going to be a, a link. So you'll see I already have a pre-done sketch here. So this little sketch I did by using some graphite paper and a transfer method that uh, I can show you down below. Like there's a link in how to do that. But for those of you guys who did not have a chance to do that yet, for those of you guys who are just dropping in, we're gonna do a quick sketch together, and then we're just gonna like we're just gonna lay it in. We're just gonna do like a quick little drawing with our pen, and you could also do it with a pencil if you want, if you feel more comfortable. Because this I use graphite paper, so this is already graphite. So where's everybody coming from today? Oh, hello, my friend Suzanne's here. Hello, hello Arlene. So good to see you again. Hi Chris. Hello. Hi Liz. Hello Liz from Savannah, Georgia. Hey guys. So how many of you guys here have never taken my class before? How many of you guys are just dropping in? How many of you guys are hanging out and painting with me? And how many of you guys are just like hanging out? Like I wanna know, I wanna say hi, I wanna. So every time you guys have any technical questions about the materials, I want you guys to write it out on the side with uh, bold letters so I can actually see them because especially if they're gonna be technique questions, that's actually pretty important. You know, especially if you get a little bit lost Oh, and my friend Greg is here, hello. Um, I'm also using some medium. So I have here, uh, this is what we're gonna use to kind of thin out the paint a little bit. But if you don't have this, it's totally okay. Uh, you can use a little bit of water, as long as the water is pretty clean and you kind of mix a little bit with your paint. But uh, this is a, I like to use acrylic medium in matte. So this is not matte medium, which is more of an adhesive. This is actually an acrylic medium that you mix with your paint to kind of extend it a little bit more. So we can, we're gonna be working with this, or if you don't have it, as I said, you can use a little bit of water, like totally okay. So I'm gonna start by taking my little pointy brush and I'm gonna, I use a lot of different brushes during this show and it really doesn't matter what brand you use as long as you're comfortable with it. And sometimes I really like to use even craft paint, but I have a lot of different types of brushes. So I'm gonna use this pointy, what they call a round brush, and I'm gonna dip it in my water and also make sure you have a rag. I keep a rag on my lap just in case I need to blot my paint. 
Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of the sienna and I'm just going to start to kind of sketch in sketch in the cat. So for those of you guys who didn't yet sketch in the cat, and you're just going to do this with me, we're just going to do a little arc. I'm going to do a little arc. We're going to do almost kind of like, we're going to, do, maybe I should slow down a little bit because I don't want you guys to be too lost for those of you guys who didn't get to do a transfer for your piece. So we're going to do a little bit of that. Okay, so we're going to do, I'm going to do it like step by step with you guys. So we've got the arc for the head. We're going to, we have a little, almost kind of like this long triangle for the nose. Okay. And I'm going to do almost like a triangle, curvy triangle for the ears. And you can look at the reference. Refer to the reference if you get a little bit lost. And I'm going to do another little kind of curvy, curvy triangle for the ear. But I'm kind of cheating because I already have a sketch down, you know. Oh, hello, Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl from Texas. I love it. Are, Cheryl, are you also painting with us today? Have you dropped in before? Oh, nice. You guys, yes, I'm, I love painting a lot of animals, actually. So animals are kind of my favorite thing. Cats are two, some of my very favorite animals. So we're going to do... I'm going to do these eyes. So there's a link down below where you can see the reference picture if you need to download it. Otherwise, I know I have a little very small one on the side for you guys to look at. And I'm just going to do a quick sketch with you guys. I know some of you guys actually kind of just like to hang out and watch, which is kind of nice, you know. I used to love watching, watching painting shows when I was younger, just to kind of hang out. And I'm going to do some quick laying in of the, the darks. I'm going to do a little inner ear. Just going to kind of very quickly sketch this in. And I'm going to do trace in the mouth. Do a curve under there. Just, is just so everyone can kind of catch up with me. And remember, you can look at this video later if you want to paint along. And, you know, maybe I'm going a little bit too fast or if you're just watching and to, to paint with us later. You know, this video will be available after we broadcast today. Okay, I'm just going to put in a few more things. Oh, Jerry's Artorama is telling hello. I love your store. <laughs> just ordered some panels from you guys too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do things like this. I'm actually kind of curious, um, what kind of surfaces are some of you guys using today? Like I know the surfaces have been something that we have talked about previously, but I'm always sort of curious, like how many people are working on mixed media, paper, how many people are working on, uh, on canvas? You know, and actually how many people are working on wood boards? Like I like to reuse wood boards just because they're, I, I'm always afraid of breaking the stuff I use. So uh, <laughs> I'm always afraid that I'm gonna break the stuff that I like uh, paint on. So I prefer to use art boards. They're a bit of a storage problem though, but I kind of love them. You know, I love how kind of sturdy they are. But I also love, um, I actually have a really amazing mixed media sketchbook and I do a lot of like, um, I do a lot of uh, painting in that as well. Mostly watercolors and acrylic. Okay, so we're just gonna lay in some of these quick details, just blocking in things and shaping, 
shaping the cat's head a little bit. And this will all change, you know, like whatever I do now is not, we're not going to keep all of it. Uh, Liz is using canvas panel. How do you like using canvas? I, I, you know, I actually really like canvas, but I don't always tend to use canvas very often. Let's see, here we go. Okay. Just gonna lay it in. And you know, you guys can use variations on the palette that I have. You know, like I have all of these like colors with all these fancy names, like Quinacrazone Red. But if you have red, <laughs> that's totally okay. Like if you have craft paint that's just red, I think that will work just fine for what we're doing. And uh, also the same thing with the brushes. Okay. Now, how many of you guys have actually done acrylic? I mean, besides the people who have actually worked with me in this class, like how many people, how many of you guys out there, this is going to be your first time using acrylics? Okay. Go. Because I kind of love, I love using acrylics just for, for the fact that they kind of dry really quickly. Like I can do all of this and know that it's just going to dry after a few minutes and I can kind of go right back into it. Okay. So... We're definitely going to change this. Like, obviously, the proportions are a little bit funny right now. But I'm going to go in with, uh, I'm just going to start laying in some of the darks, and then I'm going to start painting the background. OK, someone here is using a canvas panel. Uh, acrylic paper. I've never used acrylic paper. Is that a lot like, um, so is that a lot like using mixed media paper? Uh, yeah, a lot of people have used a lot of big canvas pads and it's very interesting. Yeah, I love, you know, sometimes with some of the, if I want to do something really just like fun, I love to use mixed media paper, actually. So I'm going to go in with the ochre, sorry, with the ochre and some burnt sienna. Or sorry, the burnt umber. I'm mixing them burnt umber and yellow ochre, and I'm just going to start laying in the darks. I'm going to pick out areas and just start laying them in. So the thing with, that I like to do with acrylics, like I like to work from dark to light and I like to work in layers. So we're going to do a little bit, like right now everything is going to look kind of nuts for a while. I think I would say for the first hour everything looks kind of crazy. You know, we're just kind of like laying things in. It doesn't really look like a whole lot. And, and that just happens, you know? Like, I want you guys not to feel like, oh, we're going to get a perfect painting on the first pass. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, the whole point of making, like, I love acrylics because they dry really quickly, meaning that you can kind of keep going back into it, you know? Let's see. And I mean, that's the beauty of working with this, with this medium, because it dries, you know that you can immediately go back into it. And I know that sometimes, I've been told that some people don't go into acrylics because they dry really quickly, but I actually think that's what makes them amazing. I mean, I actually use a little bit of this violet and uh, mix it in with the umber just to kind of create these darks. Um, because I like that you, because I like to make everything layer after layer after layer, you know? And because we're doing that, like having everything dry after you put it down, like there has some advantages. And I think that's just some like a quality about acrylics that you sort of get used to doing, you know, get used to knowing about. So I'm just going to lay in. I'm just going to fly around the painting and go from area to area and just start to build up, just like add the darks and just start building them up. And then we're going to go into the background. Add a little bit more of this violet.
Oh yeah, someone's asking me about, um, so somebody was asking me about why there was already a drawing on it. So what I, there's actually a video down below. If you go, there's a link to how I transfer, like I have a little shortcut video, how you can transfer a photograph onto a, onto your surface. So I use graphite paper in the photograph and then I just do a little tracing. But mostly it's more like a guide, you know, which is why I'm kind of showing you guys a little bit how I would like do it if I were freehanding it. But for, for uh, sometimes you kind of want to put out some work. You want to do it pretty quickly and you just want to kind of use that as a shortcut. But mostly it's just the guide. I mean, I don't use it entirely. It's kind of, it's always kind of nice to learn some shortcuts, including learning how to make a wet palette, which there's also a video on how to do that. So you can keep your paint wet for like a long time. You know, so there's, it's always good to learn a lot of different like tricks um, to sort of make things either go a little bit quickly, but it doesn't substitute for learning how to make like a drawing, right? You know, like I think I've done a bunch of classes for this show where I've like freehanded things and sometimes it's kind of nice to, to do a lot of things freehand. Sometimes it's like to mix it up and do something with a little bit more of a shortcut, you know, it's nice to kind of, uh, learn a little bit of everything. Okay, so I'm going to take this ochre and I haven't cleaned my brush yet and I'm mostly using a filbert, you know, so it's kind of round at the at the top and I'm just going to start filling in more of the darks and then we're going to leave it and then we're going to work on the background. Yes, exactly. Like tools in your toolbox, right? Like it's good to know lots of different things just in case. Just like for those of you guys who are picking up acrylics with this class, it's like it's another tool. Like you may not find it to be really easy right away or you might find it to be really easy right away. Like it's always good to kind of pick up a new skill, you know? It's like learning a new way to dance, you know? Or just learning a new way to even look at things. Because I think you can paint the same thing with different materials and then have it be a completely different painting. You know, not just depending on your skill level, but depending on how you use a material, you know? Like everybody uses materials really differently and if you don't pick up that material, you'll never know what kind of artist you could be if you don't learn it. Let's see, I'm just gonna use some of this ochre and just fill in some of this. So paintings kind of go into a lot of different stages. Right now it's in this like a very weird stage where it kind of doesn't look like anything. You know, it kind of looks like a cat, but it also looks like a big blob. <laughs> okay, I'm just filling this in. Thinking about where, where I want to add some of this golden light. And then, you know, the whole lesson of this class it's about how to use like bright whites to create like drama in a painting, you know? So this, this um, picture that we're working from has a lot of drama because it has a lot of this like bright white, white contrast that we're going to get in. Okay, I'm using a little bit of water and I'm just going to fill that in. It's not going to look like much right now. It's not going to look like much for a while, you know? Just still laying in. Yeah, I'm only using a few colors to lay it in. And then we're gonna paint over it because right now it does look kind of nuts, right? It doesn't look, it looks kind of like a kid's painting right now. <laughs> it looks like a kid's painting of a cat. Okay. I don't use much medium in the very beginning. I mostly just use water because I like to keep 
you know, just to kind of lay in all of the colors or lay in all the areas. Oh, someone's asking me what kind of brush I'm using. So I'm using a shape, it's kind of called a filbert, and generally they come like this. So it's kind of a flat brush, and it has like a round top, you know? And I like to use this, I actually use this a lot for when I'm doing round areas like this. Like this is a very, um, it makes like a nice, like especially when I'm painting fur, I really love the shape of it, as opposed to leaving, like it's leaving these almost like curved, curved indentations you see like that's curved you know so I actually what kind of brand is this this is the Qua Qualica brand but I actually use a lot of different kinds like I don't want you guys to feel like you're limited to any particular brand like uh, or any kind of like you don't have to spend I don't feel like you have to spend a ton of money to do this class with me like I actually don't think that if you're especially if you're first learning some of my favorite things to do is go to the craft store and get like a big uh, bag of their of their paintbrushes and they have all sorts of different kinds, you know, when you go to a craft shop. So I think it's important for you guys to play around with whatever brushes you feel comfortable with because sometimes, you know, drawing with like say what they call like a more inexpensive brand is totally just as fun to use as like a really like fancy brand, right? And also it depends depending on what you want to do. Like I actually have a mix of all of them because sometimes the, if you want like a big wide brush, getting a big craft brush is really fun, you know, because usually when I use big wide brushes, it's really just to fill in areas. So it's really a matter of like taste and what kind of feel you want to have. And also some people like using harder brushes, some people like using longer brushes, shorter brushes. And I want you guys to spend that time and develop like what you feel like. Going to get the most expensive thing, when, especially when you're first starting out, it's not always helpful if you don't really quite know what to do with it yet, you know? So I think it's really great to learn things in phases, just like I think it's a really good way to, um, if you're first starting out to, and you don't want something like just craft paint, right? Like every brand, every fancy brand makes a slightly lower end of their own brand, right? So like Golden... I don't know if Golden does, but I know Liquitex has a slightly lower end. And um, right now I'm using Utrecht Paint. And Utrecht Paint also has like a student grade, which honestly is really great too. Because like I'm definitely using some of their student grade here, you know. And you should, I don't feel like you need to spend tons and tons of money to learn how to make art, like at all. You know, I think you can make amazing paintings, amazing drawings and artwork out of like uh, a ballpoint pen, which costs a dollar or making amazing artwork out of just like very simple, like a number two pencil, like people draw with number two pencils, right? So I would say the same thing about learning how to paint. Like I learned how to paint using mostly craft paint. And then I sort of like developed, developed it over time because I didn't actually know that much about acrylic paint when I started to, to, started to use it. And so I didn't want to spend a ton of money either, you know? So I'm going to use a little bit of this quinacolazone red and just fill in, just start to fill it in. And then we're going to work on the background, which I keep saying that I want to do, but I keep getting sucked into coming back to painting the cat. Okay, why don't I just lay it in? I'm just going to lay in the cat before I go into the background. I'm just going to do it because I really want to. So I'm going to mix uh, this quinacolazone red with a little bit of cadmium and this ochre and I'm just going to paint. I'm just going to fill it in. Hello Michelle. Hello. <laughs> Hi Michelle, how are you? I love it when my friends drop in. <laughs> I actually have to say, I, I told a bunch of my friends that I was painting a cat today and suddenly everybody wanted to show up because 
watching people paint cats is kind of fun. You know, there's something about it. I mean, I wish I had one. I wish there was a cat walking around in the background of this, of this show. You know, that would be the dream. You know, to have an art studio with a cat one day. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and put that in the quinacrizone red. And I'm just going to start to lay this in more. So right now what I'm doing is just the underpainting and then we're going to paint over it. I don't think that, I mean, I personally don't usually make paintings right on the first pass. Like I like to do a lot of like underpainting first. And okay, I'm gonna start to fill in this part. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to this Quinacrizone red. And I'm just gonna lay in the nose. Take a little bit of this umber, mix it with that white, that pink color, and just sort of fill this in. Just sort of still blotting in all of this. You know, sometimes what I remember when I made the um, the sample painting, I went right into doing the background, but I just really, really wanted to paint the cat. So I'm going to take this white, take a little bit of this uh, red violet, and I'm just going to start to maybe not actually that might not be right. I'm going to take it into the umber and lay that part in. And then take some white, put it in the umber, and just fill the rest of that in. So it looks insane right now. It looks like all blotchy. It kind of looks like a tiger right now. But trust me, it becomes something kind of awesome later. I'm going to take some white, put it into the ochre, and just start filling in the rest of this. So most of it is filled in. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that and put it right back into the, take some white into the ochre and go right back into this, into this part of the cat. Take a little bit more white, this quinacrizone, put it into the Oh, so um, someone's asking me about this little cup that I have here. So this little cup is where I'm putting my medium. So I told you that I have go I'm going to be using this, this uh, open acrylic medium. So this medium is what I'm going to be using when I go into the second phase of this painting. So I'm mostly going to be using it to kind of extend some of the paint, but we'll talk a little bit more of that when we start working on it, okay? But um, basically, what uh, medium does is sort of extends the paint a little bit. It's what, you know, it's what uh, instead of, if you use straight paint, it dries a little quicker. But if you use a little bit of medium, it can kind of thin it out just a little bit without watering it down like water can. And you can kind of extend the paint just a little bit. And then uh, you can use the paint a little bit longer. But also it's sort of, and if you use a lot of it actually with a little bit of pigment, with a little bit of paint, it creates um, almost like a glaze. And we'll talk a little bit more about glazing as we go along. So, and a glaze is mostly just like a thin layer of color that you put over it, and it creates sort of like a, a translucent like feel. But we'll go into that as we go into the last few phases of this painting. So, I'll take some white, I'm just gonna fill in, fill that in. Okay, so it looks not great right now, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm gonna go into the background. So we're gonna just like paint work on the background right now. Okay, so someone's asking me about mixing paint. Like I would suggest that, so you see the way I set up my palette? I keep all these like warm tones up top and then I keep the browns and then the darks down here. So I would say that when you're mixing paint, 
you should do it in batches on the side. Like I know it kind of looks like I'm kind of painting everything together, but I keep certain colors together for a reason, you know? So when you're kind of mixing and you're, you're having trouble remixing the color, I would say mix a bigger batch or maybe even getting a little cup and mixing that and then sort of keeping it separate from your palette so you don't get it all mixed in together, you know? And I, I found that when I was first learning how to mix paint, I would mix a little bit of batch of paint and then run out and then it would be really hard to mix it again. So I would say like get a little cup and then like mix all of that in there and then sort of you're, you're gonna have like your own separate like from the palette but like more of that one color that you made because it is really hard to remix the color, especially if you're kind of like going about it um, like fly by night kind of the way I do sometimes, you know? So I'm gonna take some, I have like a big flat brush. I'm taking some Payne's Gray. I'm gonna add some white. I'm gonna add a little bit of this ultramarine. And I'm gonna try to mix as much as possible, actually, but I'm gonna mix it again. Yeah, I think sometimes we have this feeling that, you know, when we're doing something in one place that it always has to be in this one place, but it's not true. Like, actually, I started putting, a, putting my medium in a cup because when you put like a dot of medium into your palette, it can kind of get absorbed into your wet palette. So I figured if I just kept it in a cup next to me, I can keep going back into it and then not uh, feel like I'm just gonna, like suddenly if my paint drips, it drips into my medium and it ruins it, you know? So that's why I kind of prefer to have like a separate, separate places for things, you know? And I have definitely had times where I run out of a color that I made only to find that I, I could not mix it again. And that is such a pain. So I'm mostly mixing Payne's Gray, White, and some Ultramarine. So I'm making this gray. I might even put a little bit more white into it. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of water and I'm just gonna start painting in the background. So I'm using a heavy body paint. So that's why it's kind of smooth and creamy. Like for some of you guys, if you're using a different kind of paint, you might want to think about like if some like some of the craft paint is a little bit more liquidy, so you don't need to like say add things to it, you know, the way I do. Um, and that can be like I think I just want you guys to kind of get used to like whatever mediums that you choose, whatever kind of brands that you choose to do. Um, and I'm mostly using I'm actually only using Utrecht paint and a little bit of water. Okay. Oh yeah, someone's saying that some of the art shops are closed right now, and yeah, that's that's a bit of a thing. But you know what? These classes are available for you guys. Like if you don't, you paint today with me, or you're just watching, but you can come back to them later. Like we have uh, in this whole series. Like right now, this is like episode seven. Next week will be episode eight, and. And then by then, you know, you can have, you can go back to YouTube or to our landing page and you can watch all the videos and paint along. And for, ev and so on our landing page on artistnetwork.com, um, they're going to put up a, a link for that. Like for every episode, there is a place where you can post the painting you do during this class. And I love to see that. Like I was looking at your paintings the last few weeks and I am just amazed and I know some of you guys also send me things privately, which totally I'm okay with. Some people don't like to share what they do publicly, which I totally understand. But um, I also, I, lo I love to see what you guys do every week. And if you guys post it, I can see it or you can share it. You can share it with the community, you know, or you can find me on social media and you can, you can send it to me. I think a lot of you guys actually have been doing that um, because, you know, it's okay. Some people don't like to share what they do and that's actually totally okay with me. So I'm using a little bit of white and I'm going to take a little bit of this ochre, mix it in, maybe a little bit quinacrazone red, and I'm going to paint this side. I'm just going to paint, I'm going to make the background fairly loose for this. And I'm going to try to get some of this to mix, which is going to be a bit difficult. Someone's asked me, any tips on cleaning off your palette with acrylic? Um, I'm using a paper palette. <laughs> I'm using a wet palette. 
And you can find out how to get a wet palette. And actually, and you can use this with your gouache also, Mason. Like if you go down to, uh, there's a link on how to make a wet palette. And this wet palette is made up of, and I'm using a wet palette. So you can either buy, buy one from the store or you can make one yourself, which is really just, honestly, a plastic container with a lid. Um, some, uh, this is like a sponge, which is really flat, you know, and if you don't have, and this is like a palette paper that came along with the kit, but you can also use uh, parchment paper, like the kind you use for baking, and you wet the sponge, you put the paper over it, and then you can actually put your gouache on that or your acrylic. So I actually don't clean my palette. You know, I, when I'm done with it and I've used up like this entire area, I throw it away. You know, also gouache is really hard to keep for a long time on a palette, isn't it? You know, like I've actually never, I, I haven't used gouache in a long time, but um, I've never used, I, I actually never even thought to use a wet palette until I started doing acrylic like years ago. And that was a surprise. I could not believe that there was a wet palette. But I do have a video um, and there's a link below on how to make yourself like a, a wet palette. And that's like a nice and easy thing and it will keep your paint going for a while actually. Like if you have enough water in your sponge and you don't use it a whole lot, like honestly, like the the wet palette will keep your paint wet for like maybe even up to two weeks, depending on uh, how how wet your your sponge is, you know. But I wouldn't suggest putting too much water in your in your sponge. But I also suggest cleaning it out because uh, if the sponge gets moldy, then it's your palette starts to smell, and that's not so fun, you know. So uh, that's my suggestion for you, Mason like making yourself a wet palette because I, I've i never, I, I really don't, I know that there are different types of palettes, like there are glass palettes, but I've never used one just because when I used to do oil paint, it's like, well, then you have to clean off another surface, you know, and there was already enough cleaning up to do afterwards. Yeah, so you can actually, Mason, you could actually use a wet palette also for your watercolors. Um, I've never actually done that, but I only use like acrylics mostly. But that would be something to do, especially if you're using tube paint. Like, I know that gouache doesn't last as long. Or rather, I haven't used gouache in a super long time. So maybe for, me, for uh, I really don't know actually how long it lasts, but I know that I tend to ruin my tubes of, uh, of gouache. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of water and just keep moving this, putting in the background. Use a little bit of my, my medium to kind of stretch it. So I'm using a little bit of medium to stretch this paint without thinning it out. You see, it kind of makes the paint a little bit more elastic, as you can probably see. You know, like I already had a little bit of wet paint there and I'm already able to blend with it, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna move my light a little bit. There we go. So we have a background. Voila, a background. That means we can go back to the cat, which is really what I want to work on and not just the background. I'm going to take a little bit of medium and just sort of like scrunch around this paint a little bit, kind of smooth it out. Like if your paint is still wet, you can kind of use your a little bit of medium and just sort of like smooth it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to let the background dry a little bit and I'm going to start to fill in. Let's see, I'm going to take a little, I'll take a tiny filbert. So I have a little filbert. So a filbert, as I said, is sort of like it's round. It's a flat brush and it's a little round at the top. And someone's asking me about how I painted the background. So I kept adding a little bit of water as I went. Right, and I just sort of like painted, and then I used a little bit of the medium to stretch out some of the paint where it was blotchy. And this was just why it's like I really want to encourage that you guys experiment with the medium, and I really encourage you guys to experiment with the way you paint. Like, I actually used a lot of paint, and that was how I was able to get it to blend. Like, I actually mixed up a big batch of this uh, gray, and I was like using all of that mostly to sort of go through the paint. and. The more paint you have, 
um, and the more medium you're using, like, or even water, you can really stretch it out, you know? So it like depends. So, and usually, honestly, I don't usually get it this nice. Sometimes I have to do it four times. Like I think when, for my sample painting, I did it a, a few more times than I would like to admit. Um, but today I, I mixed up a big batch of paint, like what I was telling you guys before. And I was able to kind of like go through it. And then while this was all wet, I very quickly put this side in and then was able to blend it. But I know that's not always like a successful thing that can happen, which is why if you doesn't look good at first, you could do it again, you know? And um, just like I said with acrylic, like it's not always gonna look good on their first pass. So I don't want you to think that, oh, you know, she's doing it on the first pass, I should be able to. That's not necessarily true. Also, as I said, I mix more paint than I normally do. And uh, sometimes I don't do that. And then I end up having to mix and remix everything like four times. So, you know, like everybody is kind of a little bit different. And each time we paint, it's a little bit different. And as many paintings as I've made, I still make the same mistakes. I still not mix enough paint. I still, um, for I still get my proportions wrong sometimes. I still kind of like, I mess up pretty often actually. And as many paintings as I've done, sometimes sitting for a painting is still kind of intimidating, you know? Like let alone painting for you guys live on camera, which strangely enough, isn't nearly as intimidating as painting for myself, you know? Um, but like, I think that every day, some days you have good days, some days you have bad days, and some days you like don't mix enough paint and then you have to do it again, you know? So I'm using my ochre and I'm just gonna fill in the cat eye. I'm taking a little bit of this cadmium white and going over that a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna take my small brush. I'm gonna take a, a little bit of this umber of this violet and just sort of fill in fill in the rims of the eyes and then we're going to go back into that Okay, so this cat is officially filled in. <laughs> okay, let's see, what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna stick with my filbert, my, my small filbert, not my big one. And I'm gonna take some sienna, some brown, I'm trying to see how I'm gonna tackle this because when I first made it, I was also a little bit confused on how to tackle it. I'm gonna take some umber and some a little bit of white and mix that. Take a little bit of the ochre. And I think I'm just gonna start filling in, whew, I'm gonna just start filling it in. I'm just gonna start filling in parts of it that I understand, you know, like I wanna work on this little bit. And so when I do that, I'm not using a lot of paint. And so you can still kind of see that there's like yellow underneath. Oh yeah, someone's saying, I think when you have some people that constantly ask you about the process of painting you're doing, you don't feel as intimidated. It's true, you know, actually teaching does that. I haven't really been teaching a lot and I actually mostly teach to completely, completely beginners. And when you have to think about someone other than yourself, which is really what teaching is, you really have to say, okay, how can I break down this process in my head in a way where someone won't feel as intimidated? You know, and that really, it's really helpful. And actually, since I've been teaching this class with you guys, and now, as I said, this is week seven, um, my own work has actually gotten a lot faster. I'm, I'm Sometimes I'm even a little bit more confident when I paint, you know, on my own, because sometimes when you're thinking, sometimes when you're painting for yourself, you can feel like you're by yourself, you're making something, and like obviously you are your own worst critic, you know? And what's kind of nice about teaching people who say maybe have not painted a ton, or maybe haven't done a ton of painting in acrylic, is that this is a sense of letting go and explaining, and also it's really nice to impart information on people. It's also really nice when someone cares about what you think how to paint is, you know? Like, I've done so many paintings in my life, and it wasn't until I started doing a little bit of teaching that I really, 
it really allowed me to think a little bit more about what painting actually is and, and how I'm doing it because like I, I'm pretty self-taught with acrylic and because I'm teaching someone else and I taught myself, like I really have to like kind of almost go backwards and think about the process a little bit more, which is kind of really nice. You know, also teaching in a room by myself where I'm talking to a computer is also very different. <laughs> so I'm making this, like I had made this like kind of a, a beigey color out of umber, ochre and white. And I'm just sort of using that to fill in some more spots. And those spots we're also gonna eventually like lighten up. Okay. I'm just gonna pick out some areas. I'm just gonna go around the cat. Gonna pick out some areas here. Use a little bit of medium to stretch out the paint um, and start to kind of put on some fluff. The fluff is kind of the, uh, you know, like details are kind of like the dessert of painting. You know, like everybody wants to start putting in the fur. It's like, but if you put in the fur now, you're gonna have the paint over it. You know, I'm gonna use a little bit more, a little bit more umber. So a little bit of umber with that white is really nice. It kind of goes over, goes over what I did here. You know, it's kind of nice, kind of goes really nicely over the, the darks that are already there. So I'm kind of lightening this up in phases. Just a little bit more of that white. You know, there's a lot going on in this painting and sometimes I get a little bit lost sometimes, you know, even when I, even though I've painted this before. Okay. A little bit of more ochre. I'm just going to fill that part in. Yeah, ochre is the, the color I'm mostly using in this painting. I'm gonna use a little bit of violet. Put it here. Oh, just too much. I'm gonna make it more, some more ochre, some white, a little bit of umber. Start to think about parts here. I'm gonna think about putting the shape of this cat back. I'm gonna take a little bit of umber and just sort of think about getting some of this outline of the cat back. Yeah, sometimes when you paint the background, you kind of lose the, the outside of him. Okay, I'll take a little bit of this white. Just start to lay in where I kind of want to put more of this white. I'm gonna pick up a bigger brush. Mm 
I'll go back to my, my filbert, which is a little bit bigger one than what I've been using. Take a little bit of this white. I'll take a little bit of this white with uh, this ochre. I'm just gonna start to fill this part in. Maybe a little bit of this quinacrazone, some more white. It's almost kind of like a beige. I'm just gonna take this like almost kind of tan beigey color and just start to To pick out some areas. Like I'm still kind of like laying things out, you know. Okay. I'm gonna take once again. Didn't make enough. I'm gonna make this pink again. Some quinacrazone red, some white, a little bit of ochre, and I'm gonna start putting the ears back. I'm gonna go and take a go back into my, my round brush and just sort of lay lay back in the ears take a little bit of that white and this umber and this ochre just sort of let's put this cat ear back I'm thinking about the shape of the ear and sort of bringing that part back in. I'm just gonna give him like a light outline <laughs> just because I know that he's gonna be, he's kind of backlit, you know? So I know that this part already has to be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna take that and just sort of go back into my, with my filbert. I have like two brushes in my hand, but I'm gonna go back in with my filbert and a little bit of this sienna. And the sienna is sort of translucent, so it's kind of great. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that sienna and just sort of mix it in with that pink I already had in my brush. A little bit more of this sienna. Yeah, I have a lot of paint on my brush right now, and I think I wanna just gonna blot it on my. I have a rag on my lap, <laughs> and I use that to kind of blot my paint. I keep it on my lap just because I I, I a don't want to ruin my pants, <laughs> and b I like to know that it's a right here, you know, like uh, having a, having a rag on my lap to blot actually feels almost like a security blanket, you know? Okay, I'm gonna take some more of this quinacrazone red and a little bit of the sienna. And just sort of fill this part in a little bit. Maybe take a little bit more of that pink. I keep bouncing back in the colors. I'm gonna go back into my ochre, a little bit of this white. Yeah, I think learning how to learning how to paint, learning how to do anything takes some phases, you know? Like I wasn't always really great at being a painter, but I knew that I really wanted to be a painter. You see, like I've always known. And because I knew that I had to be, I wanted to be really good, I just like worked on it every single day, you know? 
Like I know some, I think one of you guys are saying how it's like, oh, you know, this is really difficult, but you know, like a lot of things are really difficult. <laughs> like I would think that paint is at least the most like da least dangerous thing to learn how to do, right? We're not skydiving. <laughs> we're not, we're not learning how to fly a plane. We're just like sitting at our desks and painting, which is probably the most least scary thing ever, you know? So I'm just going to take a little bit of this white and I made a little pink with some ochre and some quinacrazone red. I'm just gonna make like a pink. Uh, I mean, I love I love the fact that in a lot of ways, I mean, painting, I mean, there's a lot of th good things that I am not good at, you know, right? And there's a lot of subject matters that I'm not great at, but it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna get good at it, you know? Like I wanna get better at lots of things. I wanna get better at portraiture because I haven't done a lot of, um, I have actually not done a ton of acrylic portraiture. I've done a few, very few, and I really like to do it, but I haven't done a lot of it. And it's like anything else, like even though you know how to sing doesn't necessarily mean you know how to sing every song, right? So it's the same, like I would say that any of you guys who are starting out, like painting is in phases, just like I'm teaching you how to paint in these phases and I'm like, oh, we're doing it layer by layer by layer. Like painting is a lot like that. Learning how to be good at something takes practice and time in the layers and patience. And also, you know, I started drawing and painting when I was really young, so I didn't even have a metric of knowing whether or not I was good at it. You know, I think the thing is when you're starting, say, as an adult, sometimes you're like, you tend to spend a lot of time comparing yourself to other people when really, I mean, it kind of doesn't matter, you know? Like whether you're starting at age three or age 40, 43, or 63, whatever, it's sort of like, it's kind of inconsequential, isn't it? You know? Like, even even though, like, I am a full-time painter, sometimes I make a mistake and I go, it doesn't matter. We got a, I've got a ton of, I have, like, a whole sketchbook to mess up, or I have the whole day to mess up, and I also have time to get better, you know? And I think that's, like, a really important thing to, to, to remember when you're kind of learning any, any new skill that kind of doesn't matter if you're good at anything immediately and sometimes it doesn't even matter if you're you're great at it later you know like it's all sort of in in a lot of ways it's sort of in your head right like I've been painting forever and some days I still think I'm not good at it <laughs> some days I'm not good at drawing some days I'm not like good at getting up in the morning or I'm not good at remembering to do things and I mean at the very least like painting if you don't like do it today or you end up doing it tomorrow, it's like, it's not, it's not a big deal, you know? Like it's a, I think it's the most uh, least risky thing you can learn how to do. Okay, so now we kind of got it all laid in and I'm going to start to, huh, I wanna start to think about what I wanna do with it because even though I painted it before, I still get a little bit, uh, you know, confused. I think I'm gonna work more on the face I'm gonna put my, my brush in the water. Um, I'm gonna start working more on like the places that look very, that looks like they have a lot of holes. So I'm gonna take some umber and mix it in with this ochre and I'll just start to fill some of this stuff in. And now I'm gonna start painting like this. You know, I know that like eventually that there's gonna be like I no longer am just blocking it in. I'm thinking about the contours of his head. I'm thinking about when I paint, I wanna paint like this. I wanna paint like in, like it's actually gonna start being more like formal, you know, formally round. I'm adding a little bit quinacrazone red into this. So I'm using ochre and umber and a little bit quinacrazone red. And going to start to fill in some more of this. And I'm mostly now painting, I'm not no longer just kind of brushing it all in. I'm being much more deliberate with the way I put down my paintbrush strokes. I'm thinking I'm painting now. I'm now I'm painting in a way where I know eventually it's supposed to look furry. Okay. A little bit more ochre and burnt umber. 
I'm just going to start filling. Now I'm thinking about where I want to start putting in the lights and darks. I'm going to go right into some more of this. I haven't cleaned my brush yet. I'm just like going right into this ochre and starting to paint. Fill in some of that. I'm using a little bit more, maybe add a little bit of white to that, some ochre. And see. Now I'm using, I'm using my filbert almost sort of like, I'm starting to paint like this with like little, so I'm using the edge of my filbert. So it's pretty small. I would say this is a number, it's a number zero. It's a crystal, crystal brand, like filbert, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm flattening it out on the, on, on the palette while I'm picking up the paint and starting. So I'm, so basically I'm kind of doing this. I'm flattening out, I'm turning it over, I'm flattening it out. And I'm just gonna start using this, the top of it, you know, to start to fill in some of this now. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. That's so sweet of you. Yeah, teaching is new, but I really like it. <laughs> and maybe I like this unconventional format even more than most things, you know. Um, I Before this, I, I've i actually taught a lot of like at painting parties. And that's how I learned how to teach, which is a very also an unconventional way of learning how to teach. And I only taught people who had never, ever, ever painted before. And these were all grown adults, you know. So there's something about this format that I kind of enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna fill that in. I'm going to start at knowing that this part's gonna be a little bit lighter. I'm taking a little bit of this cadmium yellow light and mixing it in with this ochre and knowing that that part's gonna be a little bit lighter and this part's gonna be a little bit lighter and just sort of, I'm now painting in strokes, you know, I'm not just sort of filling it in overall. I'm now thinking about the contours of his face. Okay. I'm thinking now I want to make this part just a little bit lighter. So now you can see a little bit more of the attitude, right? He's got a lot of attitude, this animal. I'm going to go into this sienna with my ochre. go into this little pink that I made and go into that. I'm going to paint out these edges. I take a little bit of this cadmium orange and mix it a little bit in with this ochre and cadmium light. I think I'm going to make his face just a little bit wider here to kind of give him a little bit more attitude. I'm going to change up this photograph just a little bit. Something really fun about painting cats, actually. I'm going to take, I'm going to go straight into the ochre and just use that. I'm just gonna paint like this. I'm gonna paint in these like strokes. And take a little bit of this umber and I'm just gonna start to pick up some of the sienna. I'm just gonna go back and forth and just pick up things from the my palette. I'm mostly using I'm mostly using sienna, umber, and some ochre. And I'm sort of going back and forth from place to place and not cleaning my brush because I want to keep all of these colors on my brush. Take 
a little bit, I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium orange and sort of use that. And that's kind of cool. It kind of makes it glow a little bit. This cadmium makes it a little glowy. Okay, go back into my ochre. Take my ochre and just sort of cleaning out these areas. Still painting to the curve of the cat, you know. And it's sort of going over what I'm doing, but you can still see the underpainting. Take a little bit more of that. Over that with some of this pink. Taking some white into my ochre. And I'm just starting to use my filbert and start to add a little bit more, some more of these little hairs to kind of liven it up a little bit. We're not quite doing all of that yet, but we're gonna get to. Like details, like we all want to do the details. We want to start painting the eyes, you know? But I don't want you to do that quite yet. Details are kind of like the dessert, you know? Like you don't get to have dessert until you get the main course. Like, like the details are like the super fun part, the thing that we look really look forward to. I'm going to take a little bit of this violet and go underneath his eye. There we go. Put that in a little bit. Let's see, and the whole point of this class was to kind of teach you how to do like a lot of contrast, contrasting light to make the image pop out a lot. So for those of you who are actually talking about the lighting, like that's the lesson today. It's like to paint something in order to make it kind of really pop out, like having really good contrasting light. So I'm taking a little bit of this quinacrazone red and a little bit of sienna and just sort of going under underneath her nose. Taking some more of this ochre and mixing it with the white and some cadmium white. Taking more of the white, going into this quinacrazone red-pink that I created. Just so I don't have this like bottom part be so, be so yellow. Take a little bit of that orange, a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna start to clean up this part. And I'm gonna leave some of the, this underpainting also, I'm gonna leave some of that because I wanna keep some of those splotches there. cat's starting to look like it's up to something. <laughs> okay, I'm adding a little bit of white to this pink that I'm making. And I'm just going to start to 
really start adding some lights and then we're gonna tone some of those down eventually. There's so much to do on this painting. It's some, it's so uh, hard to know what to do next, you know? And I picked a very complex piece. I thought it would be a lot easier, but it actually is a lot more difficult. I'm gonna take this quinacrazone red and some sienna, tiny little bit of this violet and go into this. I'm gonna take a little bit of medium and mix it a little bit with this violet. Yeah, the violet's kind of nice and unexpected. A little bit more of this umber to clean that part up. Yeah, this is all in phases. Like right now I'm cleaning up all the areas that I haven't gone over. Okay. I'm going to pick up a bigger, a bigger brush and I'm going to start working on his body again. Okay, let's go and taking a little bit of this purple and a little bit of this ochre and I'm just going to start filling in parts here. Yeah, using a little bit of purple with uh, yellow is very interesting because, you know, purple is a complement of yellow. So when you use a little bit of purple with your ochre, it kind of makes, it kind of does something different, you know? A little bit. Okay. I'm going to... take a little bit more of this ochre, mix it in with this pink that I made, and start to lighten up some of this going into the ochre. Maybe add a little bit of cadmium and go underneath there. Hmm, this, this ochre is a little light. I'm going to go in, put a little more purple, purple into it. And we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna start painting this way. Add a little bit of white into that. I'll take a little bit of this medium and I'm just gonna mix it in a little bit with this paint. So when you mix in medium, with some of your paint, it can kind of make it, look, see, it's already kind of creating almost a, a translucent feel. So you can kind of keep the underpainting a little bit. It sort of makes this other kind of feel to it when you use a little bit of medium. But I'm also gonna go back in and lighten up some of this. Take a little bit of my cadmium, take some white, There. And now this is going to blend in just a little bit more. 
Now I don't want to do too much on the body. I want to kind of keep it fairly impressionistic. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit more of this. I almost kind of keep the body a little bit blurry. But I'm just kind of painting this way. I'm going to go into my violet and some I'll take the violet and add a little bit of ochre. So I'm just going to lighten up some of this body. I'm going to turn my light so you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> Sometimes these lights make a glare on the painting. Okay, that's a little bit better, right? Without the glare, obviously. I'm going to just fill that in a little bit more and then take, uh, you can see, I'm going to take a big brush. I'm gonna take a bigger brush that I have. I'm gonna take some medium. I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of ochre, and I'm sort of mixing up this like batch. And then I'm just gonna to start to put a glaze on the body. So it kind of integrates it a little bit more. I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm mostly using medium. It's a little bit and using the medium and creating this like glaze, you know? And by creating the glaze, it's sort of, you see it's a little, the paint's a little bit more tacky. The paint's able to move a little bit more. And that sort of integrates it a little bit more. So now I can kind of say that I'm not done with the body, but I can kind of like move on from the body a little bit more. I'm going to add some of that, the highlights on the side. I'm going to take a little bit of this white and I'm just going to start to take a little bit of this ochre and this white and I just want to kind of give, give this like an edge. So now it's, this side's a little bit more glowy. Right? Isn't that kind of cool? It looks like he's backlit. And a little bit more of this white. It's because I kind of want to work on other parts. So now that part's a little bit more glowy. <laughs> it's kind of cool because it kind of gives me like an idea of where else I want to take this painting, you know? So I'm going to work from top to bottom. I'm gonna go up, take my my white and mix it with some of this quinacrazone red, and so now we're kind of really adding. I'm just mostly using white now, and just really. Yeah, I'm, gonna use a, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. So I'm gonna go and start using like a thinner, slightly smaller brush and take a, kind of make this like pink color, some white. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this cadmium actually and mix that in with the white I want this a little bit yellower. There, it's a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to 
start creating the the outlines. take a little bit of cadmium mix it with some white because I want these highlights a little bit more yellow I think I'm making them too pink okay so I'm gonna make his ear so it's just a little bit Let's widen his ear a little bit so now you have this like little glow on the side there I'm going to go and just, I'm going to now use two brushes at the same time. I'm going to start using my small filbert, which is like a, a size zero, and it's the silver crystal brand. And I have a very small, round, uh, pointy, round by Princeton. It's a number two. So I'm going to start using both of these simultaneously. So I'm going to start using this one, the filbert. And I'm going to take a little bit more of this yellow mix and just start to, I'm going to take a little bit more of this, like a tiny bit of medium. And I'm going to use this medium to mix in with the paint and sort of just sort of pat that in a little bit. And by using a little bit of medium, it kind of moves the paint. I use that to move the paint around you know, and it's sort of like a thin, it's thin, you know, already that kind of creates something. And my, my, my burnt sienna is already kind of translucent, so I'm just going to go right in there and put that in the mix. I want to make that even lighter. So now it kind of looks like the ear is like, um, there's like a glow through the ear by doing that. Like not just sort of making the ear brown or making it white. And now it looks like there's a little bit of like a glow within our the little ear of this cat. And I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium orange and I'm going to mix it a tiny, tiny bit with the sienna and I'm gonna clean up some of this this edge and that's like looking really nice sometimes using a little bit of these cadmium colors can be kind of magical Okay, so that's looking kind of nice. I'm going to go back into my little brush and take a little bit of this white and cadmium. Like I'm really tempted to start painting fur right now, but I don't think I want to yet. I want to still kind of get in some more of this stuff laid in. I want to work on the other ear. <laughs> so. Oh, hey, Daniel. Happy birthday. I'm going to take a little bit more of this yellow, some white. I love it. Painting on your birthday. It's like a perfect thing. Are you actually painting along today, Daniel, on your birthday, or are you hanging out? Okay, kind of laying in some of that light, and I'm doing that with some cadmium and white, so it's not just straight white. And I'm going to make this cat just a little bit more yellowy, glowy. 
I'm going to go into this, take a little bit of this medium, kind of just, oh. It's kind of nice when people just drop in and say like they like what I'm doing. It's kind of cute. <laughs> it's kind of nice watching someone paint a cat. It's kind of soothing, you know? It's soothing for me to paint the cat. And I'm just sort of doing some dry brush. So I made this, um, I'm using a little bit of cadmium, a little bit of ochre and white, and I'm going to sort of dry brush, dry brush over some of this cat, this part with the cat. I'm just going to dry brush it. It doesn't have to be super perfect because fur is not perfect. And then I'm going to start working, I'm going to go back to the, uh, to the ears because I really want to get the ears done. Okay. I'm still using mostly this small uh, filbert. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to go from top to bottom now. I'm just going to work through the whole thing now. I'm going to go into the Sienna, a little bit of this quinacrazone red, and A little bit of this umber. Sort of like I think I made the ear too short. What do you guys think? I think I'm going to repaint some of this ear. I think he just needs to be. I think I lost some of it. I'm going to just paint some of him back in. Right, that looks a little bit better, right? His ear is just a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna. Okay. Okay, a little bit of poker. I also really want to keep this glow in this ear. So I'm mostly using, I'm mostly using Sienna and a little bit of this Quinacrazone red. Take a little bit of medium and kind of move this around a little bit. But I'm just gonna work the whole cat from top to from like from ear to from ear to head because I think the body is close, you know. Oh, my friend Anthony is here. Hello, Anthony. My friend Anthony from high school. <laughs> There's nothing like live painting in front of people to kind of be like, oh, am I gonna do this correctly? Like let's completely re let's uh, let's make this ear just a little bit bigger, on live on live camera, and hopefully we don't screw it up. Um, okay, but I think it looks pretty cute, right? I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna add some more things there. Oh, someone here is saying I'm painting my aunt's cat, Eleanor. Hello, Eleanor. I'm painting my aunt's cat for Christmas. Any tips? Oh, okay. Are there any cat painting tips that you want, Eleanor? Uh, I would say have a really good reference photo 
and do try to do a sketch. And you know, I think the thing is the trick of making a really good cat painting <laughs> is to make it look, get the colors kind of right, get the proportions correctly, obviously, but also like get a foot, get like a really good reference photo. Like I know that people have their cats. Sometimes cats are really hard to, to shoot, but having a good reference photo is so great, the best. And having, even if you have one good reference photo and then you have like a ton of other photos and then that would be perfect. You know, I think that's just sort of pay attention to uh, like try to bring a little attitude to the cat. If your cat is kind of mean, <laughs> if your cat's kind of cute, like it depends on what kind of, uh, what kind of spirit do you want to bring into uh, the cat painting, right? Like, uh, tell me more, tell me more about your aunt's cat. Like I would like to, I love to hear people's cat stories because I really, I've always wanted to have a cat and I've never gotten one. <laughs> like maybe, I think the thing is when you're painting anybody's animal, you know, and luckily if you spend any time with it, you know a little, a little bit more, like you want to bring in like their personality, you know, not just sort of a portrait of a beautiful cat, but you want to bring in a little bit of that like attitude that cats all have, you know, like they kind of own the place. Okay, so I'm gonna dry brush in this ear a little bit. Take a little bit of this cadmium yellow and just dry brush. A little bit more of that white. So now it looks like you can kind of see through the ear, right? Because we're just kind of lightening that up. And it's going to start to add little things little details. I'm going to take a little bit of that cadmium, a little bit of quinacrazone, and kind of add these little beautiful little red edges to the, to the ear. So now, now both ears are kind of illuminated. You know, I'm going to lighten up this ear just a little bit more. I think it needs it. It's just a little bit more light. Oh, I can't wait to start painting the fur, but we, we aren't quite there yet, you know? I want to kind of get into the face a little bit more. Um, actually, we can, I'm going to take a pointy brush and I am going to start putting in some fur. Because I think that we are, we're kind of good at this good stage, like he's all kind of laid in. I'm going to take a little bit of this violet and put in his eyes. It's kind of, now he's definitely looking at all of you. And well, hello, B from South Africa. Are you painting also, or are you just hanging out? Like, are you just dropping in and watching me get to the end of this painting, this cat painting? So now he's kind of looking at you, you know, he's kind of just like staring right at you. So I'm going to start going in and start adding the fur. So I'm going to go and go right in and take some of this ochre, mix a little bit with some cadmium, and I'm just going to start adding lights. That's a little bit too yellow. I'm going to mostly use ochre. I'm going to use some ochre and mix it in with this pink. 
and I'm just gonna start to lighten up his fur. Taking some more white. I'm gonna take some white and some sienna and some yellow. And by using this like brush, this pointy brush, I'm just going to start to very quickly, like it looks like I'm painting for one fur at a time, but I'm not, I'm just, I'm mostly sort of laying it in. Take a little bit of this umber and mix it in. Sort of bouncing back and forth between all these different browns. I'm really gonna start going for it. I'm really gonna start like heading to like adding little things. Oh Cheryl, you don't think it ever went through an ugly phase? I kind of thought it went through an ugly phase for a while. <laughs> It's really sweet of you. I think that all of these paintings are kind of like, oh, it looks crazy. But I think the thing is when you, the more you paint, the, the more you know, like your, the way you tackle it, right? Like even though there was a lot and even though I had painted this before, I still, when I was been painting it under a camera, I still got a little bit confused about what I was supposed to do because there is so much going on in this painting, you know, like there's so many textures and, um, it's funny because I think that I felt like there was a point where I was like, uh oh, what what am I doing next? You know? And even though it's like it's funny, you know, you could paint something and I had painted it, literally I painted it last week. I still was like, uh oh, like where am I supposed to go with this painting? Like I have to, you know, and sometimes you get a little bit like uh I got a little freaked out sometimes, you know, when I paint. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of this white and just start to little things here like the little hairs that are standing up it's already looking kind of furry I'm gonna go into some of these so I have all these different colors mixed all over my palette and I'm gonna bounce back and forth between all these different colors and use them for these phases like and I'm using I'm not even using a really then I'm using a number six and this is like a dynasty paint right, paintbrush and it's not even like a tiny one you know I'm just using it because I don't want like really little things yet because I also want to be able to fill it in uh, so I'm bouncing back and forth between all the different weird color mixes I've made because I want to be able to integrate all of these colors back into my painting but I just know that I'm following the photograph and I'm trying to get into these like parts where I can kind of lighten it, lighten it up. Okay, I'm going to go into my sienna and kind of bring back some of these, these spots. I'm going to start losing some of these like really pretty areas though if we start doing too many things. So I'm just going to go back and forth between all the different colors that I have on my on my palette. That's why I mix so many different types of paint, you know? And I want to be able to use all of it and integrate it back in. And as you do this, you're going to find that certain brushes work for you a little bit more, certain colors, certain techniques. Like I'm just sort of like using, using these. I'm just sort of using short strokes, you know? I'm going to go into this taking a little bit of white and just kind of going over some of this, these colors that I already have. 
And I think I want to add a little bit of gray into his face just so I can integrate some more of what's in the background. So I already made a lot of gray. So I'm going to take a little bit of this gray and add some white into it. And I want to integrate him right here, you know, kind of having a, having a little bit so it's sort of integrated. I'll take a little bit of this medium and just sort of create almost like a punkish blue right there. And then I'm going to just continue to add highlights. Yeah, the blue kind of makes it, changes it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to go into, start using my smaller brush. Kind of helps sometimes just to wet it, wet your brush a little bit when you're trying to get these like pretty, pretty little edges. Okay, I'm going to go and paint the nose. I'm making, I mixed a little bit of Quinacrizone red with a little bit of white, and I'm just going to work on this nose. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white, and then I'm just going to add a highlight there. And then take a little bit more white into that quinacrizone red and just start to make these little feathery movements for the fur. And I want to kind of darken some of this a little bit. I take some of that down. Take a little bit of cadmium, a tiny bit of ochre, and just sort of bring some of that, that down. I'm using a lot of ochre to kind of integrate things. Okay, 
going to work on the, the face a little bit more, which I feel like I've been skipping out on. And take some yellow, take some ochre, some white. I'm just going to start to Oh, someone's asking me about my medium. Oh, I'll show you the medium again. So I'm using this. I'm, I like to use the Golden Open in uh, acrylic, the acrylic medium in matte. It also comes in glossy, but I, I mean, I don't love glossy, so I mostly just use matte, but you can use glossy if you want. Um, I just don't always love my painting like being shiny. So I use this to mix in uh, with some of my paint to kind of thin it out without like watering it down the way water can, you know, so so far. Hi Liz, how are you? <laughs> and yeah, so uh, I tend to use it, I don't use a lot of it. I use it actually sometimes to make thin glazes and sort of integrate certain things. You know, you're going to see it a little bit more as I go along. Um, okay, so I'm taking, I'm just going to start to add, I think I'm going to switch to my, I'm going to still not switch my smaller brush yet. Like I still haven't, I'm not quite ready. I'm going to take some more of this umber. Mm, I don't like that. I don't think that's too dark, too light. I want to keep this part darker. So I'm just going to go back in with a little bit more of this umber and go over that. Take some more ochre. Kind of getting a little bit closer. I'm gonna darken this part up a little bit. I'm kind of bouncing around between the siennas. I'm gonna keep that part a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna tone that down just a little bit. Some white, take some ochre, and just continue to lighten it up. Yeah, we're in this like nice little phase right now where we're just adding details. Take some white, I'm gonna add more white and take a little bit more of this cadmium yellow and just continue to lighten it up. Mm. I'm gonna start using my smaller brush now because I think we're kind of missing out. I'm gonna take some white, some of this cadmium light, continue to add. Okay. So now I'm going into using a tiny, tiny brush. Like I'm using this small, it's a, a two from Princeton. It's very small, okay? And I'm gonna start using that to start adding little highlights. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to use this little brush to add little hairs. I'm 
mean, this is the yummy part, you know, when you can just sort of play and add things. And then I have to get to the eyes, right? Because the eyes are kind of important. I kind of lighten this part up with some more white and then I just kind of take this little brush and I kind of do little little hairs and lighten up this edge and continue to add little just little hairs Not a lot, you don't have to do a ton, you know? I'm just gonna take some white and really sort of dig into these edges, just like straight white, and just dig into these edges and start to do like little hairs. Yeah, I'm just mostly using white right now to just like straight white, white paint. Just to kind of give it Yeah, like this is like the yummy part now. You can kind of do all these like little things. I mean, I'm still gonna go over things. I still have to go through the, the eye, but I kind of wanted to get into this too. Like adding some of the little things and taking some more ochre and just sort of adding a few more things. I'm going to mix uh, some of the sienna with some of this ochre and I'm just going to start to do little, oh, that's too much. Add some, actually a little bit of this cadmium orange and sort of add it into the edge of this cat. Oh, someone's asking me if I sell these. I mean, I can, I guess. You guys can always find me if you ever want to buy one of these. <laughs> it's a funny question, you know? Like, I'm making these every week. Um, I mean, if you guys ever are, I guess you guys can always find me on Instagram and message me, you know, if you ever are, you know, interested in any of the paintings I do on this show. Uh, generally, I haven't thought to sell them, but sure, you know, totally okay. Uh, it's not hard to find me. It's just my name, dot art at Instagram, but I also kind of want you guys to share your work with me anyway, you know, like, it's great. I, a bunch of you guys actually have reached out and have, and now we're like, kind of like, like Instagram buddies or Facebook buddies. And, uh, you guys, after this show is, uh, after every episode, actually for every episode, we have a landing page where you can post your work. And for those of you guys who want to share with the community. And then there are some people who don't want to share with the community. And actually a bunch of you guys have actually messaged me separately and have shown me your work, which I, I really appreciate actually. And as I said, it's not hard to find me. So if there's ever like sometimes, actually some of you guys have actually reached out afterwards and have asked me some like art advice. So that's very, that's really cool. Like I'm totally okay with you guys like finding me on, on social media and asking me any like questions outside of this, you know? Uh, because it's just sort of like it's really nice because like the whole idea is that like I actually am sitting here in a room by myself talking to my computer but talking to you guys and sometimes this is just not the same as like it's just really honestly not the same as regular teaching you know and if any of you guys ever feel like you guys want to reach out to me 
about any of these classes, like I am super cool with that, you know? And also we do have a landing page for every episode. You know, there's a little community board uh, below every episode and you can find, uh, and you guys can like find everyone else that takes this class and you can post your work and you can share it. And it's kind of lovely because I've been sitting on the page every now and then and I see that you guys have posted and it makes me so happy to see what you guys do. And as I said, if you're really super shy about sharing your work like publicly, you can always find me on social media. It's really easy. You just look, me, look up my name, you know, and I'm pretty easy to find on, uh, on Instagram and stuff. And I also have uh, a couple of, like, I, I think I have a few videos, video tutorials on the Artist Network website. So I think they can put that up. Like on our landing page, actually, there is uh, a bunch of links to the classes, the other classes that I have had online, and as well as some articles I've written for Artist Magazine, and uh, and just a little bit more about me, you know. And for those of you guys who are not familiar with Artist Network, it is like a beautiful little website, and there are just hundreds of tutorials. So. And we also obviously have some free stuff that's on uh, YouTube, but we also have like a lot of like beautiful like packages you guys can get and you can learn how to do kind of anything from a lot of the online teachers that we have, you know? And I, I've i been working for them for on and off for about uh, three, two or three years now and it's been kind of lovely. Then you can see, you know, like you can link onto the landing page like all the different things I've done here for Artist Network. So, you know, I have a amazing, I have a video that I, I shot a couple of years ago with Artist Network giving you tips on how to jumpstart your, uh, your online, I mean, your jumpstart your uh, creative uh, sketchbook. And I have a few about like how to make, how to use warm and cold colors. And I also have a landscape painting uh, video on there with acrylics. So that's kind of awesome. That was my first online video with acrylics for Artist Network. And it's pretty, it was pretty awesome. So if you guys want to learn a little bit more about what I do, you can go there. You know, you can see what else uh, is available and you can also see the other videos that I have with Artist Network in case any of you guys want a little little jolt with your, uh, with your sketchbooks, which I highly recommend, you know? Like, I love having sketchbooks for different reasons. I actually have, to I have dozens of sketchbooks. I have sketchbooks where I do just painting and I have sketchbooks where I do a lot of different types of uh, like just ideas and I throw them out. So I have uh, on that landing page and I think they just put up a, a link. There is a bunch of videos that you can kind of look at to sort of like help you kind of with your creative process. So, you know, if you're not looking at my stuff, there's also just like hundreds of videos that Artist Network has that you can look at and you can kind of learn anything from that site, you know? Okay, let's see, I'm gonna just keep highlighting and then I'm going to work on this little guy's like eyes because I think it's time to start working on his eyes. Um, there is some of my work on that landing page, but you could also just find me on my website, which is just my name, which is just ggchen.com. Or if you want to see my Instagram, it's just my name. It's ggchen.art. And that's like super easy to find. And But as I said, like if you go onto the landing page, you can find a little bit more about what I do, about my other videos that I've done for Artist Network. And if you kind of just hang out on the Artist Network website, you can find tons and tons of uh, resources in which you can also download and check out like, you know, all the different workshops. Like they have watercolor workshops and a lot of drawing workshops and for those of you guys who don't know like there's also a free uh you know we have this three o'clock thursday painting class but there's also the wednesday class with scott meyer every every wednesday at three o'clock uh eastern and i think some of you guys are already working with scott but for those of you guys who have not like he has already like oh like dozens of videos up you know, during that series, and that's like a three o'clock live class, just like this is, like a three o'clock live class on Thursdays, but his is on Wednesdays. And those are really awesome. Like sometimes I've sat through those classes too, and those are really, really fun. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys here who are watching me have already watched Scott's class because he's been running it for a few months now. So I'm just gonna start working on this 
Eye. I'm going to take a little bit of cadmium, a little bit of this, and take a little bit of medium and glaze over it. And I'm just going to glaze over this eye with some ochre and I'm just going to do, and I'm going to paint that eye back in. I'm also going to take a little bit of this purple, this violet, and use also a little bit of medium and go over that, go over what I just did with that. And now it's looking a little bit more mysterious. And I'm going to take a little bit of this. Violet and just start to bring that back in. There, it's a little bit closer. Well, now this cat has a lot of attitude. I'm gonna take a little bit of my, my Mars Black and just sort of give it a little bit more of an outline. And then I'm gonna lighten up some of this because I don't want it all so dark. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of this. Uh, oh, I've got the wrong color on my. I'm gonna take a little bit of this I'm going to mix a little bit of umber with some violet and take a little bit of white and mix that in. And I'm going to take that and just create a little, like a highlight underneath the eye. Maybe you can't really see it. I'm going to take a little bit more of that white and take some violet, a little bit of umber, and add a little bit more white to that. And I'm going to use that to kind of just, maybe it's just a little bit more white. Here we go. Create that little, little thing underneath the eyelid and do the same thing over here. There and that, I'm going to now just start adding the fur and cleaning it up. Okay, I'm gonna take some white with my little brush and I'm just gonna start adding little highlights of the different colors that are on. I have these little peach colors. I'm gonna to start to wrap this up just by adding some highlights to things. There we go. Kind of dry brushing with this little brush. And Just creating a little bit of fur. Okay. And, ooh, there is so many little whiskers, but we're not gonna quite do that right now. I'm gonna do all this other stuff first. And I'm just gonna start using the white, just kind of picking up certain things. I'm gonna use some cadmium and some white, and I'm just gonna start to Illuminate some of this part. Go in with more of this ochre. And I'm just going to start making the highlights on the side and then I'm going to paint in the whiskers. So 
So now when you add this like just a bright line on the side, it really makes the whole thing pop. But I'm gonna take my little brush and just start to add little, tiny little hairs. I'm not gonna do this everywhere because that will make us all crazy. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna soften up the edges. Just a little bit more here. There. And I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna go over some of this real quick with a little bit of white. I think this part could be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, my medium, take some white, and then dry brush some of this white in a little bit more. To sort of create a little bit more contrast. In there this part's a little bit lighter and I'm gonna take this brush and just sort of do a little bit of highlight in here I'm gonna take just some white and I'm gonna start painting in the whiskers Okay, so the whiskers are everywhere. Some of them are kind of like all over and I'm just gonna think that I wanna have some here and then there, that's a whisker. So I'm using a really fine brush. I'm using the two. And I'm just going into my white and I'm hoping I don't mess up. <laughs> I'm picking out little things. And now I'm painting the other side. Oh, it's kind of nerve wracking. Okay. And I can kind of add a little bit more white here, right? Just kind of give it a little something. And then I'm gonna go back into painting, <laughs> painting all these little whiskers. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Also, it's not quite, uh, I'm gonna use these, this uh, ochre to make these whiskers. I'm gonna use some white and ochre and just sort of make oh yeah this brush is amazing Cheryl you should get these 
These are some of my favorite round brushes. Um, they are by Princeton and they are, uh, maybe you can't, I'm trying to see if you can see it. They're by the Princeton brand. Let me see if you can see it a little bit closer. Probably not. Um, and they're, this is like a number two. I love, this is my, these are my favorite round brushes and you should absolutely pick up a couple of these. You can get them in twos, get these small ones. And they keep a point for a long time. And honestly, I've been using this brush. I've only been using this brush really. And it really hasn't worn out a lot. So I think this is a great buy. Like you should totally get one of these, Cheryl. Like you'll love this brush. Uh, so this is, I, I've just been like obsessed with these. Like I usually don't like really long bristle brushes, but these are pretty great. And I, I honestly think it's a pretty perfect brush. <laughs> you should totally get a couple of these. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and like do, and I honestly think Cheryl, if you get these or any of you guys, like you should practice painting whiskers with them because, oh my goodness, ah, like this is, it's really something. Like they make a really good consistent line. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this though. They make a really great consistent line. I think you should totally get a few of these into these different sizes. And honestly, these are kind of my, my go-to round brushes. I'm gonna do a couple of more whiskers. Honestly, I can work on this forever. I can make whiskers and fur for the rest of my life and work on this painting with you guys forever, but nobody, nobody needs to sit here with me for the whole night. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do just a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up in a bit. And of course you guys can always come back and watch this again after we're done. And especially if those of you guys who wanted to paint, but maybe it's kind of hard to keep up or you just wanna look at it again, like this video is available after we're finished. And we actually, this is, as I said, this is episode, this is episode seven. So we actually have a lot of them. So if you go to our landing page or even on YouTube right here, you can just look up uh, painting together with acrylics and see all the classes and on the artist network feed like there's just I think that we have yeah all of my my videos are on the artist network feed so you know just look up more painting together with acrylics okay so I think we're getting pretty close here it's gonna do a couple of more whiskers a little bit more fur and then I'm gonna call it It's funny, painting something that's kind of complicated and trying to distill it is, is kind of fun. You guys have been very encouraging. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna paint a little bit more fur. Let's see, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make these eyes just a little bit darker. I'm gonna put a little glaze on that and just sort of darken that a little bit more. What do you guys think? It's getting pretty, it's, I think it's pretty close, right? I kind of work on this in every kind of order, you know, like 
I think that you should, it's important to not ever work on one thing too much because then you're going to overwork it and then you're going to have to make up for it for the rest of the, to the rest of the place. So I kind of work, I kind of work on instinct actually, like Cheryl, like it's sort of sometimes I kind of like look at it and I go, all right, like I just want to work on this for a while. Like I already know like the body is going to be the easiest. So I work on that first and, and then I kind of like work around it and I lay it all in, you know, like you see how I kind of laid it all in at the very first, at the very beginning. Like when you do that, then you sort of have a pretty good idea where you're up for, you know, and that's why I lay it all in first because then I kind of get a good feeling of like, oh, what's going to be difficult and some things turn out to be more difficult than others and some things are more difficult and you didn't expect them to be, you know. Okay, so let's take a minute. I think uh, we are pretty, this painting is fairly complete. You know, I'm gonna take a minute if you guys need to catch up. I might make this a little bit lighter because I'm crazy and I want to. And why not, you know? So let's take a minute, look at the, the look at the finished piece, and we'll talk about like how you know using these like very bright highlights kind of make everything great. And you know, it doesn't kind of take a lot. You kind of honestly, it's all in phases. Like it's you're never gonna make this painting. Like you're never just gonna make it as like, oh, we're suddenly finished and we're done. Like you have to lay it in, do layers. And I really like emphasizing the idea that you have to make everything in layers in order to make it feel like real, you know? We're gonna do the lights and the darks and then we kind of build and build and build and build and build. And then the very end are like the yummy parts, which is like doing the fur with a little brush, you know? <laughs> okay, so let's go back. So. I really hope you guys have enjoyed class today. Uh, I'm really hoping that uh, for those of you guys who weren't able to keep up or you were just watching, you get to go back and watch this video along with our other previous videos. And next week, we'll, we're gonna come back uh, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, like we do. And for those of you guys who haven't, like you should watch Wednesday's class at 3 p.m. Eastern with Scott Meyer with uh, Drawing Together. And so you could draw with him and he's an amazing teacher. And please go to our landing page so where you can post your finished drawings, uh, finished paintings, and then I get to see them and I get to hang out and see what you guys do there. If not, you guys can always find me on social media. It's pretty simple. Uh, and always definitely go to artistnetwork.com where you will see just endless resources with every medium, with dozens of amazing talented teachers. You can learn how to watercolor, you can learn how to draw, you can learn how to paint in oil paint. And definitely come back next week Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern, where we can paint together again. And next week, we're going to be painting a, a chicken and we're going to be learning about texture. So I am really excited to see you guys again next week, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube with Artist Network. So I'll see you then. Okay, bye.